Hi, and welcome to another episode of the VIP Sound Lab. I'm your host, Joe Fontaine. And in this video, we're going to take a look at compression and how we can use compression to get more punch and drive to our kicks. So what is compression? The general idea is to add tightness and punchiness to the overall sound of the drums. When the sound hits, the compressor kicks in. By timing the release, as well as the attack, we can get the desired effect for a nice pumping effect. So here I am inside machine. I have our machine Beach Lab HD drum kit loaded up. You guys can get this kit off the website or download the free demo if you'd like to follow along. What I did was I created a quick four bar loop just to show you in the video how we can use compression to get more punch. So here's the drum loop without any compression added. Being that the kicks are already well EQ'd, I'm not going to worry about adding an EQ at this point. I'm going to jump over here to group B to set up our drum bus. As you can see right here, remember on machine you have a master level where you can do mixing, as well as a group level, as well as a sound level. I want to be on the sound tab, out, I selected sound one, I named a compression. Why? Because when we go back to group A, we want to have this drum bus to be accessible to any sound on group A, whether through the mains here or the aux is here. Okay, on the sound level, we have four tabs. Tab one, we have an icon here where I want to select this drop down menu where I can select between sampler, input, MIDI out, plugins where our instruments are usually located, effects, which is nine times out of 10 where we will find our built-in plugins that are internally built into machine, as well as open different projects such as sounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take sound one and turn it into an input. By turning it into an input, you see that the settings comes up where I can choose the sources. I have internal, I have externals one through four, and I'm gonna select internal because we're gonna be routing the audio from group A and have it affected by our compressor. Now we have three additional tabs here. I'm gonna to go to tab two. We'll select this tab here, scroll down to plugins, and I'm gonna bring up one of my favorite compressors from Waves, which is the SSL comp. Okay, now here's our compressor that we're going to use to get more punch and drive from our kicks. Now immediately you notice that some of the default settings that it opens up with are just not going to work. For one thing I notice off the bat, the attack time is just way too fast. It's showing as one millisecond. The release is also showing at 1.2, which again, in most situations will not work. Nine times out of 10 when it comes to compression, when a drummer is playing his drums, you want to basically take the compressor and match it to the beats per minute inside the project to try to get the nice pumping effect to bring up the overall level of the drums. I'm going to leave it at analog to keep it warm, but before I do anything, I'm going to leave these settings just the way they are without touching anything. So then that way you guys can get an idea to see the A and B between what I'm going to do and the default setting. I'm going to go back to group A. Again, here's our main, and here's our auxes. Here's our two kicks. I want to take these two kicks and add these two kicks to our drum bus. Kick one, I'll select here where it says group. Add it to B, which basically means group B, compression. I'll do the same with this one, as it was already set previously. So now I'm going to play the four bar loop again with these settings not altered. Okay, now if you listen to that very careful, you notice that at this point the drums, they don't sound bad. But if we want to get more punch and smack from the drums, we could do a couple of things to achieve this. 
So before I go all the way to the max, let's experiment a little bit with that. For example, I'm going to start off slow. I'm just going to raise it up to, let's say three milliseconds for right now. We'll drop the threshold down right about at six. We'll take the release and we'll drop it down to six. We'll leave the makeup gain low. Now, again, I don't know how this is going to sound yet because I just want to show the difference as we gradually increase the attack and gradually lower the release to get the louder compression effect. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this at these settings here. As you notice, it's getting better, but it's still not punchy enough for me. So what I want to do now is I just want to basically barely kiss the needle here and get more compression and make our drum sounds louder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play here and in real time, I'm going to raise this up and you'll gradually notice the difference in the drum sounds and you'll hear more punch. Okay, so just for the sake of the video without running too long, I was dialing it in where I felt to me it sounded like the drums were more punchy than they were without the compressor. So for example, I'm going to play it without the compressor. Now let's add the compressor and hear the difference. Now, to me, that made a big difference in the drum sounds. Also, keep in mind, there are other things that you can do as well. To further manipulate your drum sounds, you also have other options such as your Transient Master, where you can either dial it in through your input gain, the attack, the sustain, as well as the limiter. So, for example, let's go ahead and use the Transient Master to further shape the sound. So with these few simple steps, you see how just adding a simple bus compression to your drum sounds can have your drums sound a lot more punchy. Again, this is your host, Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.